Let's make sure we're coming in live. We should be. And there we are. Nice, nice, nice. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today, today is December 31st, 2021. And we're doing a live stream open discussion. On, I'm going to take this down. I have my headphones set up here. Hopefully, you're getting the sound on this. Let's check it out. Actually, I just had to turn this off. Boing! Turn that off. Nice. I might plug this back in because we might watch a video. Hopefully, this isn't going to be too noisy for you guys. I want to do it real nice and gentle. Real nice and gentle. It wasn't noisy. Oh, wait a second. That's right. I can't have it in because it's not the desktop. It's the audio here coming out, which is the mic. So, good morning. It's 9.30 a.m., December 31st, 2021, and welcome to another live stream. And today's live stream is personal finance live stream. Trading stocks on Wall Street. So let's take a look at some option options chains. Basically, we're going to talk about trading options, puts and calls, uh, very basic stuff. We're going to look at some numbers. We're going to track some stocks. We're going to look at some charts. We're going to talk about buying puts. We're going to talk about buying calls, and we're going to talk about straddling um, strategy, which is one of the strategies you can do for options trading. Okay, and um, since we're not going to touch on politics and sort of current events aside from trading stocks we should be able to load this on to sensor tube uh, but if the discussion takes us anywhere where you know we can't talk about the stuff on sensor tube we'll make a little announcement and let people know that the this live stream, the full live stream, will only be available on Bitchute Rumble and Odyssey, but we should be able to load the whole thing onto Sensor Tube. Um, the sensors should like uh, appreciate <laughs> trading on Wall Street because Wall Street uh, controls the sensors. That's an icicle falling down. It snowed a lot here last few days, so and it's been crazy cold. So we've been having icicles forming everywhere and as we wait for notifications to go out let me bring out the chat see if anyone's popped in connectivity film happy new year's eve happy new year's eve to you as well connectivity film how are you doing i hope uh i hope you're in a part of the world where you're allowed to go out and party. In Montreal, they just went into full curfew. So they're not allowing anybody. Like, just imagine being a restaurant owner or a pub or whatever, right? You spend all this money for New Year's celebration. The government comes out and says, the, day, the night before the party is supposed to begin, you sold all these tickets, right? You spent all this money. The government comes out and says, lockdown, curfew, no party. Wow. What are you going to do about it? Felix, how are you doing? What's up, Chicho? I'm currently uh, setting up my DJ equipment and cleaning my house to prep for around 40 people coming for a New Year's party. Wish me like good luck, brother. That should be a blast. You should live stream that stuff. Let, let people enjoy your music. Enjoy the party because some people are not going to get the opportunity, right? And as we wait for people to pop in san diego connectivity we are having a board game night nice jumanji diplomacy oh my god you're gonna play diplomacy on new year's eve you're gonna have you're gonna lose friends man card games card games against humanity card game uh cards against humanity cards against humanity i don't know that game uh card games are fantastic of course maybe there should be a little a little little bit of moolah on the line as well right uh, it is the new year coming on to the new year. People might be wanting to uh, test out their luck. Elder God, we are crazy. Connectivity says <laughs> Diplo If you guys have never played diplomacy, uh, playing diplomacy could be quite brutal. <laughs> 
Elegon, happy new year to everyone. Happy new year to everyone. Oh, yeah, you guys are. No, no, you're, you're not in New Year's yet. Your New Year's Eve, you guys are partying already. Elder God, have you hit the cider yet? <laughs> and gang, while we wait for notifications to go out, we are uh, on Patreon, right? So if you want to follow this work, Patreon is a great way to do so. If you want to support this work, Patreon is a great way to do so. And we do have a subscribe star uh, page again as well. Lord Raiden, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Appreciate it uh <laughs> Matt, matthew kabira happy new year's eve happy new year's eve day morning for me morning for us and we do have a couple of friends couple coming over we had a couple come come over last night we we had some food and talked about things and tonight we're gonna have some food talk about things my partner is gonna play some music oh you haven't hit the cider yet oh my god fun 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 well it is the day of the year <laughs> if you're gonna hit it up and for those of you that are supporting this workout patreon gang thank you very much for the support i appreciate the support and i know a lot of people do as well six hours and 24 minutes to go nice 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 for us it's eight eight 14 hours and 24 minutes to go and we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash teach live if you want to participate in these live streams boop, 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 boop. as they're happening twitch is where you want to be at and first time chat lord e uh, raiden seven i have i have following you for years i love your content and wish you a happy new year thank you very much lord happy new year to you and your loved ones as well i hope you guys have a fantastic 2022 okay should be an interesting year if nothing else just like 2020 and 2021 <laughs> we'll see how things play out we'll see how things play out and as always gang thank you very much for being on twitch thank you for following this work thank you for subbing thank you for coming here participating in discussion sharing information and mods thank you for taking care of business thank you for taking care of business protecting of the earth lord raiden protector of the earth fun we do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on mines vk gap parlor getter and bitcloud free speech social networks and you can follow the work there as well we do have a discord page you can come into our chat anytime you want and type in ooh, 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 exclamation mark discord and the link invite will be there as well as the links will be there in the platforms on the platforms description of the platform in description of videos on the platforms that we'll be loading this live stream on and we will be uploading the audio of this live stream to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho as a podcast and this podcast should be available in your favorite podcasting platform including spotify itunes and google play okay and this live stream should be uh most likely will be available in its entirety on sensor tube if not you can find it on bitchute rumble and odyssey as always welcome to another live stream gang the cares how are you doing hello gentlemen gentle women's fun lord nice to meet you elder god i pray you aren't uh censor shan shanax censor shanax i don't know what that refers to let me take these things down and i'm not sure what type of uh, how many people we're going to get today for these live streams or for this live stream because it is new year's day uh, people have plans activities that they're dealing with so um, it is the last trading day of the year and usually trading on wall street is pretty quiet on certain days of the year this being one of them is usually a fairly quiet quiet time uh things should kick up hardcore my guess at the beginning of 2022 which way the markets go is anybody's guess uh my advice to anyone is to hedge your bets okay uh try to uh 
hedge your bets play the movements it is in my opinion it is not uh, aside from certain sectors of the market uh, certain stocks it's not really necessarily a hold a buy and hold strategy it's a traders market right now and I believe it will be for quite some time to come okay and some sectors should be avoided some sectors I believe should be invested in okay and uh, what we're gonna do I've set up uh, you know we're gonna take a look at the desktop okay and for some reason I just can't have you know have the pop-up chat I've have it I have it on this side you know the chat is showing up on the screen here as well but I do have it popped but I for some reason I can't keep it on top for some reason top of the other windows uh, so what we're gonna do here let me show you the the angles that we're gonna use now this is the video we got right and if we take this off we got the desktop happening here as well right so let me bring out the chat and you can see the chat on this side disappears right and I'm bringing it back up again so you can see it that way I can read it but every time I click on a new window here uh, we're gonna see the chat disappear all right so I'll keep on going between the windows and the chat pop them up again okay and uh, basically I have some uh, tabs open uh, for different platforms different websites I use to do analysis do trades right uh, one of the ones I end up using is uh, for example uh, market watch where basically I've queued up Alcoa that we can take a look at see what the stock is doing okay so basically you can use uh, hopefully this is coming out okay you can use market watch or whatever platform you want I I, I usually use market watch uh, pre uh, market open see what the stocks are doing uh, after hours or before the markets open right and after the markets close right these things open up usually 4 a.m. my time or 5 a.m. you know the activity begins um, East Coast time of uh, my time anyway which is you know eight eight o'clock East Coast time so an hour hour and a half before the markets open you can see, start seeing activity on certain stocks and for another hour and a half hour to hour and a half after the markets close you continue to see certain activity after hours because you know companies release news and financials and updates and stuff so markets either before market opens or after market closes so you see movements happening and what you can do with market watch you can go to advanced charting here right and you can take a look at the market you know what the stock's been doing here in this one day five day you can do a five day and it does the adjustments you can do one month it does the adjustments you can do six months three months one year and take a look at what a stock has done right alcohol has done fantastic in the last couple of years right here's a three-year chart and it bottomed out at five and a half right now it's sitting at sixty dollars right ten plus time eleven times return in basically two-year period less than two-year period which is fantastic but one thing you can do with the stocks here it hit the advanced charts right what the advanced charts does you can see the different time frames you can uh, take a look at the charts for one day five day ten day one month three month by default it goes to six months and you can overlay some metrics on here and these are some metrics that I've overlaid previously and this is what you sort of see right you can see the uh the, 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 the momentum the the sort of uh, the different metrics that you can take a look at if it's overbought oversold um, rsi and whatnot and two of the things that you should be looking at which is a 50-day moving average either exponential or uh, simple moving average and the 200-day moving average right and one thing i like about uh, 
market watch the blue line that you see here okay the light blue anyway is what the stock price is doing so that's the top one is 59 60 uh, four and then you have the black is the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average is uh, in light green which is sort of a crappy color to pick it doesn't come out as nice and you can see where the stock is you know sitting in regards to uh, its activity right and before we forget gang uh, one thing we should always keep in mind is uh, everything that is happening in our world is related to information basically information coming out from uh, centralized capitalist power uh, so if we really want to be able to uh, see ourselves into a prosperous future we really need to have transparency and accountability of capitalist power which is one reason we really need to work towards freeing assange julian assange right because he is a journalist and a publisher that is being persecuted crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity right so never forget the mantra really that uh we need to work towards freeing Julian Assange and that will free humanity, right? And for more information, you can check out wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org or our Julian Assange and WikiLeaks playlist on Sensor2, right? So this is one thing you can do. You can take a look at the charts and see if something's overbought, oversold sometimes, right? So you might want to buy it if it's oversold down here and ride it up to a position where it's overbought and then you can sell it or you can buy calls when it's oversold and buy puts when it's uh overbought betting that it's going to go down or sell puts and when it's oversold and there's a whole bunch of strategies you can do right so this is the alcohol chart um one thing you can do with alcohol stock here is i mean you can use google as well it's simple right um, very simple chart this used to have metrics on it that you could put on uh, but it doesn't anymore uh, google being what they are they've killed off a lot of the uh, options they had on their websites on their on their tools for uh, for people to have ease of access to information can we look at the stock intel for sure we'll take a look at intel sleepy waves and gang by the way if you guys if there's a stock you want to take a look at we'll take a look at it right i just queued up alcoa because alcoa is a stock that i've been following okay and uh family has been playing the ups and downs with puts and calls on it right and not necessarily straddling it but because um the it's not worth the straddle to a certain degree i'll call sort of trades at a fairly predictable pattern right which is sort of what you're looking for uh if you're doing this type of trading now what you see here uh and by the way sleepy waves we'll take a look at our uh intel as soon as i just run you through the through what i've opened up here with my uh tabs right and what you have here with a stock right for those that don't know and here's in alcoa's options right puts and calls and uh, this is a q trade uh that you can do on and i like the the way it presents itself right but before we get into the options one thing you want to do is if you don't know what options are here is a link to investo investopedia investopedia okay if you're in the chat investopedia and i'll probably provide the link in the description of this video uh once it's been uploaded to our video sharing platforms as well as the audio on soundcloud okay and this is the page for essential options trading guide and it sort of runs you through what options are and options are basically a derivative right that you can buy which is a secondary bet on a stock where it's 
time it's got a time constraint on it and one option in general is equivalent to a hundred shares of stock right so it's really linked up with fractional reserve banking is very much on the same level if you know anything about fractional reserve banking where banks can loan out a hundred times or more of the amount of cash they have on hand and deposit right so options you can think about as if you end up buying one option one option for a certain stock may it be puts or calls is basically gives you control over a hundred shares okay over a certain amount of time okay so that's what options are now if you're betting that a stock is going to go up they call those options calls right if you're betting that a stock is going to go down they call those options puts okay and this page has videos in there as well but let's what we'll do we'll just read the key points here okay key takeaways and by the way before we continue anymore my internet has been kicking in and out uh in the morning early morning was kicking in and out it's snowed here a lot it's cold and whatnot so if there's any interruptions of the live stream breaks my apologies sort of beyond my control and i will try to come back up again uh as soon as we can right if not today we'll continue this discussion in a future day right but here's a key takeaways from options trading and we're just going to read this from invest investopedia right so key takeaways point one an option is a contract giving the buyer the right the right but not the obligation which is extremely important but not the obligation to buy in the case of a call or sell in the case of a put the underlying asset at a specific price on or before a certain date and we're going we're to expand on this we'll take a look at this right point two people use options for income to speculate and to hedge risk right and when it mentions people use options for income basically those are people that are either writing uh calls or writing puts right basically what that means is if a stock is going up right and you think the stock is going to go up what you can do is sell puts short basically naked sell puts and take that money and bank it and usually you don't extend it over too long of a period usually you're selling uh basically using as a as an income basis for shorter uh time frame right because you can't really predict too far into the future in certain markets right so you can either if a stock is going up you can write puts right basically sell them without having them and because it's a time constraint instrument right derivative over a certain time it goes down to zero and if you sold it then you made money right so if you sold a put at two dollars and after a certain time the put expires you banked that two dollars and the same can be said if the stock is going down if the stock is going down you can write calls on it right if you sell a call at two dollars and the stock never goes up that call is banking the money because it's going to go down to zero right that's the income part of it speculation is just basically either writing put some calls shorting them or buying them straight up put some calls and betting that a stock is going to go up or down hedging risk is basically if you're got a position in a stock right and you think there might be some bad news coming but you don't want to pull out of that stock for multiple reasons one of them being you don't want to pay taxes right if you had a lot of gains if you sell a stock then you have to realize those capital gains right so you don't want to necessarily realize a capital gain just in case there's going to be a hiccup in the company in stock right in the price of the stock so what you can do is if you're betting the stock is going to go up and you want to lock in your profits you can buy puts which basically means that you're going to bet that the stock is going to go down for a short period of time or a long period of time it doesn't make a difference and if the stock goes down then you can sell the put and that difference right that difference you didn't really lose because the stock went down you just covered it with your put 
and the other way around right if the stock is going down and you think it's going to go down a lot further but there might be some news coming in that might push the stock high you might end up buying calls for it and if the stock does a bump right then you made that difference you made money off that and you can sell that and then wait until the hype is over and the stock continues its downward trend right so those are what income speculate and hedge imply right or are referring to the other point options are known as derivatives because they derive their value from an underlying asset and that should be self-explanatory because you're not really investing in something in, in, a, in, a, in a tangible asset like a stock right stock in a company you're doing a secondary bet on that thing right so for example if you see two people flipping coins right for a hundred dollars a pop right Boop, flip a coin one person's calling heads the other one's calling tails right well those people are playing for a hundred dollars a pop but the audience can make secondary bets on the flip right so a couple of other people that are watching these guys flipping a coin might decide to say hey listen i'm willing to give you two to one odds that the guy flipping a coin is going to get two heads in a row and one person may take the bet right and because that's happening the odds are more right so that person when he takes the bet he'll put a hundred dollars up and because this person gave two to one odds if the person flipping a coin doesn't get head heads twice in a row the person that offered the option right will lose two hundred dollars and the person that took uh the option bet wins the two hundred dollars and takes his hundred back right and flip it flip the flip the person does flip two uh heads in a row the guy who put up two hundred dollars wins a hundred dollars from the other guy that's the way you, th you should think about derivatives and there's multiple layers of derivatives right the stock market is has a certain amount of value being played on it but the derivatives market is a few orders of magnitude larger than that okay it's huge so if when you see liquidity completely die out in the market it means the derivative market is being destroyed or uh there's a lot of people making a lot of money which is usually it's a two-way trade right it does happen lonely piggy how are you doing hello chicho and chat hope everyone's having a good new year's eve so far indeed good new year's morning for me i'm eating pastries mum's pastries i'll show you guys in the in the big screen uh super delicious super delicious first time chat im lumbo im lumbo hey chicho first time chatting you live i'm interested in what family is currently invested in i am still more put puts then calls indeed okay uh imlu lumbo uh family right now is uh I, I forget what the percentage is there's been a lot of trading going on uh as far as uh, uh equities is concerned uh family is probably holding um 40 percent of the portfolio in equities okay uh maybe maybe let's say 50 percent of portfolio in equities okay majority of those are cannabis stocks okay because i think they've hit a bottom the family thinks they've hit a bottom okay so cannabis stocks are the majority of holdings in the family's equity position the other 50 percent is options and from that 45 percent is puts okay so about uh, not uh, 45 percent from that 95 percent is put so basically 45 percent of the portfolio is in puts right now which is a huge bet huge gamble with a possibility of substantial losses but if it goes the right way possibility of gigantic returns okay that's approximately what the family's position is right now and the puts encompass uh, are encompassing some high-end fang stocks uh tech stocks as well as some uh industrials as well okay as well as some uh consumers consumer goods uh, uh textiles if you want to call it right 
the fourth point they have here gotcha thanks so much still have puts on twitter still have puts on twitter indeed uh sold out of uh puts uh family sold out of puts family obtained put positions in twitter when it was in the 60s and 70s low 70s and sold out in the low 50s right uh sold out a little too early but it's locked in profits twitter went down to 43 42 it bounced to around 44 and the family just acquired puts uh some more puts on it uh, this week right and since we're towards the end of the week you can guess when it was uh, early week as well as uh, later week a 44 dollar a week uh, trade and um, uh, and they're longer uh, time frame because short time frame it might still pop up but on the longer basis I don't think Twitter has a hope in hell of retaining its value market cap okay possibly high gamble right the fourth point in these key takeaways is a stock option contract typically represents 100 shares of the underlying stock but options may be written on any sort of underlying asset for uh, from bonds to currencies to commodities and I've never played the uh, you know uh, Forex I've never played um, options on bonds currencies or commodities uh, only puts and calls as well as up uh, for stocks equities as well as straddling right which is basically betting that a stock is you know is going to do movement okay that's what you're looking for when you're buying puts and calls you're looking for movement because uh with options you basically it's a time sensitive bet right the longer you hold every day that goes by you lose a little bit of your value on your options right and as you get closer to the expiry date the option value drops significantly okay so that's sort of the underlying takeaway from this and when you control 100 shares just think about it this way if you if you buy one option for a certain company you control 100 shares so if the stock price of that company does a one dollar movement you didn't just make one dollar if it's on the way up or lose one dollar on the way down you made a hundred dollars or lost a hundred dollars right if a stock if a stock moves ten dollars you control the 100 shares then that's a thousand dollars right so and there's time sensitivity in there there's um what do you call it uh, the premium you're paying for it and whatnot but that's sort of the base way you can think about it and on this page you know there's videos that you can listen to what are options and they run you through it uh, options as derivatives calls and put options call call option example more videos put option example and you can go through it um, buying selling calls and puts buy call sell call and all these things that you can do and then secondary hedging your bet straddling whatnot so there's a whole bunch of information there and I'll link it up just in case anybody uh, has popped in uh, more recently okay now now that's clear okay this is let's take a look at Alcoa now this is the day's movement on Alcoa on Google right here's the five-day movement on Alcoa here's the one month movement on Alcoa here's the six month movement on Alcoa here's the one year movement on Alcoa which would be the same as a year to date why why TD is the year to date right here and it's up hundred and sixty percent okay and here's the five-year movement on Alcoa and if you actually went up like a year and a half Alcoa is up much more than uh, 150 percent it's actually up a thousand percent okay because it's, it's up 10 times its value okay so that's the movement on Alcoa and you can take a look at you know this chart here and it uh, for hey come on come come there we go and 
I've put the metrics on here and the metrics you should be looking at to see what you want to do. Now, if you look at Alcoa right now, if you were betting, you might decide that the stock is going to go up higher or you might decide that the stock is going to go lower. I can tell you that family right now has puts on Alcoa. Okay. So family is betting that the stock is going to go down. Now, what are these bets like? So for example, alcohol is a time sensitive thing, right? Let me do a little refresh here. Give you the most recent price. You do a real refresh. This is Q trade. And alcohol is up 62 cents today, but alcohol was down actually today as well, right? So you can go to overview and see what the stock has done over just today, right? It opened at 59.16. It went right here 5916 and it went as low as 5870 okay and right now it's trading at 59 oops I'll bring it down 59 uh 5984 right so there's been an over a dollar fluctuation just today on Alcoa right and it gives you some other metrics it's a PE of 13.88 um it's got a beta of 2.74 beta is how you know movement uh yearly high it's basically sitting at a yearly high yesterday was at the year two days ago was it a yearly high and whatnot right it's got the 50-day moving average uh volume and all that jazz you can take a look at right you can also come on this and click on you know the chart and on this you see the fluctuation and family has already saved some uh, metrics on here just to be able to see what's going on and I like the view here because it's, it's cleaner and the light blue line that you see here is the 50-day moving average this is the stock price right here this is the 200-day moving average this is the relative strength right so momentum behind it this is a Williams uh, indicator this is this is momentum but that's the relative strength and here is the uh i call this mcdonald it's not mcdonald macd indicator right and usually when as far as i see it when a stock does this it could continue to have the separation but you're looking for a rollover of the black line into the red line and that sort of gives you an indication that the stock might be under pressure uh okay and you can go into the options and with the options because it's a time sensitive thing every friday options expire right and this is let me just check the chat make sure there's no questions here what's the trajectory for q1 the trajectory for q1 are you um referring to beat uh their financials is that what you're asking about and why you type that out uh just talking about the time sensitivity of this thing this is q4 2021 and then this is the last friday of the year right that these options are going to be traded and you can take a look at here what you see here in the light green up here okay the calls by the way the calls are on this side on the left side of the graph and the puts are on the right side of the graph for me anyway if you're seeing it uh, it might be flipped around on your screen right so on this side over here these guys on this side doop, these are the calls and on this side these are the puts right now these calls and puts expire today right that's why you're seeing a huge fluctuation here right because when the stock was down like for example the value of the puts for alcoa strike price of 60 and the strike price of 60 means you're allowed to sell alcoa at 60 dollars okay today and if the stock is a lot lower all of that is the premium you're collecting money on it right so if the stock all of a sudden drops to 55 dollars today right you just made five dollars or four dollars and four dollars and 68 cents if you are able to buy alcoa options to put at 32 cents right 
So the difference you would pay, you're allowed to sell it at $60. And if the stock is sitting at, you're allowed to sell it at $50 and the stock is sitting at 55, that's a $5 money banked, right? Now, what you see here is the calls, which is you have the right to buy Alcoa at $60, the calls are even worth less because right now Alcoa is trading less than $60. So if Alcoa goes up to 65, for example, right? And if you're able to buy the call at 18 cents, then you made $4.82 profit on that deal. If it goes up to 65, which is not going to do, right? Now, some people might, might be selling these calls at if you can get it for people are willing to sell it for 21 cent right at 60 strike price right so that means the people selling these calls at 21 cents right are betting that alcohol is not going to close at 60 uh above 60 dollars and 42 cents because the 21 cents is the premium that they're paying for it which is how many hours left four and a half hours left in the trading day right so it's it's sort of playing fluctuations right now that's today the price on it right quarter one for the market uh you know what i don't know what it is i don't know what it is it's fairly the market is expecting it to be fairly high uh, financials we can go to financials I usually don't look at what the expectation is uh, what they're expecting I go with what I'm expecting right some people if they're gonna miss their numbers or they're gonna ma make their numbers is that what you're asking beat I thought you were uh, more into crypto uh, I'm not trading crypto no beat uh, for multiple reasons now this thing expires today these puts and calls calls and puts now you can use different uh websites to get the same information here is uh yahoo finance right and this is the view of uh straddle okay which is sort of the same view as q trade that has it here right which is you can take a look at it and here's the straddle uh trades going through same thing we're talking about right here right here's the again on this side is the calls and on this side is the puts and this isn't in real time the q trade right now would be in real time let's do a little refresh on it let's see what we get okay so a little refresh it says the last traded was 15 cents and the last traded was 36 cents right if you look at yahoo it says the last traded was 43 cents right and this is 17 cents for the call and 43 cents for the put right so if you were holding the puts on alcoa at 60 expiring today and you didn't sell earlier today you lost 60 you lost 60 percent of your value if you were holding the calls and it would suck if you're holding the calls you would have already lost 43 uh, percent of your bet right now one thing you have to consider this number here let's take a look at this thing this is how much was traded today okay and this is the open interest this guy's here okay open interest now there's one thing that happens with options is usually there's a saying that says the market likes to inflict the most amount of pain uh to a trader so the market usually likes to close i don't want to say usually but the market a stock usually not usually but ten, sometimes tends to close at a strike price where there's been the most amount of activity puts and calls open interest right For in this case it's not because there's nine thousand three hundred uh calls open interest on alcoa at 65 dollars strike price right so it's right now going to be closing 
lower than where the most amount of activity was on it now we didn't take a look at this to see how much of that was traded yesterday okay I'm just gonna read a comment uh, I am asking what you think will happen to the market next year oh what are you think I'm gonna uh, beat uh, I mentioned this earlier on uh, right now family about 50% of uh, families uh, portfolio is in options 95% of that is in puts so about 45% or 90% is in puts so 45% of the options play of the play in the family's portfolio is puts so the family is betting that the market's going to have a serious hiccup that's our take okay sleepy wave chicho do you have any advice on a resource to learn how to trade um i've been trying to find on youtube but the finance gurus on there are terrible in my humble opinion just like i don't align with their values and morals it's hard to find a stock trader with a uh conscious conscious yeah uh the market doesn't uh uh wall street doesn't have a conscience okay market does not have a conscience market uh will be happy to make money on a billion people dying just as much as it will be happy to make money on one person living right it, it's a market doesn't care for us our family there is a conscience at play here okay so for example uh, the family has played puts on moderna but even when moderna is oversold the family does not buy calls on moderna because we don't want to make money on people dying okay but we can we've talked about moderna or current events live streams right beat you moving like that i like your style thanks beat why do you think the market will dump what's the particular reason uh, multiple reasons multiple reasons uh, currency crises um, national currency crisis one uh, supply chain being broken is another um draconian fascistic governments in power is being another resistance rising up is being another uh, possible wars a lot a lot and the market's being completely overvalued we're in bubble territory up the yin yang to say the least right so this is one place you can look at here's the yahoo one you can look at this as well right remember this doesn't give it to you in real time the the value of alcoa is in real time switching it should be anyway uh, but it doesn't update the options in real time and you can change the view on the yahoo uh, uh, view instead of straddle you can look at it in list position and in list position basically gives you all the call options in one location above and all the put options below options chain right now and then you can go to here's the nasdaq you can look at the same thing straddling uh the straddle look which is basically uh here let's do a little refresh on this see what the latest uh price is and yeah it gives you the price it's up 55 cents and alcoa right now it went down in price so previously here the option oh this one we did it here we'll do it on this one uh, for example alcoa put option expiring today was trading at 36 cents right right here right we didn't do a refresh on this but you know it was been sitting here for like 30 minutes right and alcoa was up at a was up uh, we might have done did we do a refresh i don't know but basically it was up let's say 60 cents right so the put option was trading at 36 cents right now alcoa is up uh 55 cents and the put option is now at trading at 49 cents right so the value of the put option went up because uh Oh, come on I clicked on it so it took me here so the value of the put option went up 
because the stock went down right and over here you're seeing the same thing the value of the put option was 49 cents so this thing here let's let's do a little refresh here so it's alcoa is up 55 cents right let's do a little refresh hopefully it's changed bring it should be changing in real time but no it's still at 55 well we'll come back to this right so keep those numbers in mind and one thing you need to consider as well alcoa price because it's aluminum mining right fluctuate based on the price of aluminum so if you're trading something you really want to take a look at the underlying uh, metrics that sort of govern what the price of the stock is right so if you take a look at this thing aluminum prices peaked uh, in October at $3,200, right? But if you look at the alcohol price, okay, hey, okay, it's got to fluctuate a little bit. So if you look at the price, here's the October price, alcohol price peaking here at $57, right? Aluminum prices right now are sitting at 2,800, right? So it's about $300 less than when aluminum prices peaked, but Alcoa stock is actually sitting higher than the previous peak, right? So take that whichever way you want, okay? So that's sort of the general gist of taking a look at these things to a certain degree right why do you think uh be wouldn't currency crisis lead more to hyper it would lead to hyperinflation but i think there would be and what would happen if there's a currency crisis the stock market will go up and it has in some places because people are wanting are wanting to buy tangible goods right something tangible because the value of the money is coming down so if there's hyperinflation you don't want to be sitting on money you want to be buying something and the markets will buy uh stocks or cars or real estate or whatever collectibles right you want to move the money right however if there is inflation now i'm not expecting hyperinflation in the united states inflation there's definitely there right in double digits it's not just six percent or whatever it is right but what that does as well is take liquidity away from the markets right so there's a fine line between hyperinflation and inflation right micro twist happy new year chicho and chat happy new year to you as well micro twist was uh, it was new year's eve in japan three hours ago happy new year year to japan i'm pretty sure they were able to party hardy without any restrictions right which is fantastic lark bark happy new year my friend happy new year to you as well lark bark in a seven but not in tokyo uh i was in japan elder uh micro twist i was in japan 2003 spent new year's eve nice i didn't make it to japan when i should have made it to japan i have friends there for a while uh hong kong in 1985 then pay Pa, then pa yuki 311 i spent new year's eve 2018 in japan but i was sick oh no was that sick because you were drinking too much at the izakaya bars and stuff is that what you did what do you mean it takes liquidity for, from the markets it takes liquidity from the markets so for example sleepy waves if a family needs to buy food and food prices are double what they were a month ago and their wages haven't doubled then they have to take money out of their investments to be able to buy food right so it freezes up a, up certain parts of the economy right so if you if you were thinking about going buying textiles clothes right and prices have doubled in the last month and you don't have enough you know you only have enough money to buy food then you're not going to go buy a new t-shirt or a shirt if prices have doubled if you need to feed the family so you will spend the money on the food but you will not spend money on disc disc discretionary items right so you have to account for that
Okay. Now, sleepy waves. You wanted to look at. Uh, you wanted to look at uh, Intel, right? So let's take a look at Intel. Boop. Let's do a little look see here. And by the way, let's do a quick look for Lululemon. Okay, just because. Boop. Lululemon is down that much, which is good since family has put some Lululemon. Let's look at take a look at Moderna. Moderna was up today. Okay, Moderna is up five dollars and forty cents. So, hmm, what's going on? That's an indicator, by the way. Microsoft. Microsoft family has puts on Microsoft. Microsoft was actually down three dollars earlier today and is crawling back up again, right? What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, well, let's look at Intel. INTC. Okay, here's INTC. Let's bring up, uh, you know what? We'll close the NASDAQ website for options. We're not going to use that. We'll keep the Yahoo open. Uh, we don't want that. We want Intel, TC, <clears throat> Intel, and we'll bring up Intel here as well. Okay. I N T C. <clears throat> and let's look at the chart for Intel first of all. Okay. And here's because it's a simple look. We'll take a look at it in uh, in. Uh, On Google because it gives you a clean it's not busy right so here's the Intel chart so Intel chart in last year it peaked at around $68 right and it's sitting at around $51 $52 right now okay it's got a market cap of 210 billion dollars a PE of 10% and a yield dividend of 2.69% okay you can come down here you can look at what the financials were on a quarterly basis so they had revenue of 19 billion net income of 6.8 billion cost of revenue of 8.45 billion you can see all these metrics this is the quarterly and here's the annual okay annual they had 77 billion in sales net income of 20 billion okay down you know 0.71% from the previous year cash on hand of seven billion dollars cost of revenue 34 billion right <clears throat> so that's the general chart for a year here's the general chart for five years and here's the max chart for Intel it does a lot of fluctuations and it's looking like this and it looks like just basic it looks like it's sitting on some kind of support right let's go back here and let's look at the technicals on this thing. Okay, some of the technicals anyway. What Lululemon is clothing company in Vancouver, those are icicles falling, clothing company in uh, headquartered in Vancouver, British Columbia. It's overpriced in my opinion. It's uh, the, the clothing is, uh, I knew someone, I know someone in the textile industry and they say it's cheap cheap ass shit right but it's got a huge market cap and people buy it the one of the reasons they people buy it and my friend uh, in the textile industry mentioned this uh, she had the opportunity to uh, work for lululemon uh, when they first started by the way and basically she told me that people buy lululemon product because it's it's high-end high-end expensive meaning right so it's for people who have extra cash to spend and it makes this is her uh, paraphrasing her wording it makes uh, women's asses perk so women like buying it because it perks up their bums it makes their bodies look better than what more fit than what they are right so it's a smoke and mirror thing but they do have serious revenue they have stores all over the world and they make good income right uh dempa yuki no just a boring kind of sick unfortunately oh no boring sick 
not the exciting stuff so here's Intel right this is the six month chart on it right you can take a look at it it popped above the 50 day moving average and then most likely if we do the earnings you can add a new metric here da -da 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 overlay uh, where's the overlay uh, chart overlay let's see if we can put the earnings on here where's the earnings uh, price parabolic moving average uh, simple moving hey where's the earnings events oh there it is events earnings let's put the earnings on here there it is you see this major drop here that was most likely they missed their earnings right so the stock does drop now before we put that on that's what we're looking at right but when you see a drop like this is usually an announcement or usually it's a warning or they actually came out with their earnings and they missed their numbers or expected numbers right so it's a good idea if you're seeing major doop, major movements in a stock to see what took place right and right now this is where Intel is sitting is channeling between the 200 day and the 50 day moving averages right and here is the one year chart for it right it looks like it might be bottoming out okay and we can definitely take a look at the chart here as well Intel here we can take a look at the chart and some of the metrics that we've set up just to see oh yeah by the way here let me go back one more and you can look at different stuff right now analyst rating you know there's nine people that say it's a buy uh, right here right oops right here right nine people say that's a buy you know two people say that it's overweight 21 analysts are saying because it's one of the major tech companies it's got major coverage 21 people are saying just hold it and six people are saying sell it right now we can take a look at the charts here as well and do one year chart on it and you can take a look it's showing the same thing right and for us this is just a moving average that I've plotted on here put on here so it's sitting well below the 200 day moving average but a little bit above the 50 day moving average here it is here now what I'd be betting that this stock is going to go up uh, let's see the 200 two year chart on it here's the two year chart all right let's do a five year chart on it five year chart refresh yeah it could go either way uh, but it, the odds are it won't do serious heavy movement and then you can take a look at the options and see the premiums on it and Intel again this is trading at what 5169 so what you see here is sitting between 51 and a half and 52 right so people are betting one way or another there's lots of activity going on here right 5,000 trades and stuff but you can take a look at for example two months out February okay February it's saying that if you're gonna bet that let's pick a nice number it's sitting at 5170 so it's between it's closer to 52.5 right so if you're betting if you want to bet that this stock is going to go up right and you want to buy calls for it for the next two months right you're going to pay a, you're going to pay let's say take what it's being offered at or what it traded at last bid ask this is the last last trade dollar 77 right so right now dollar 77 is the uh, if it's going to go down you're going to have to pay a dollar 77 to be able to control 100 shares of intel right on the way down right so you have to pay dollar 77 to have the right to sell intel at 50 dollars a share if that's the case then you only make money right if intel trades is sitting at uh 48 right 20 no sorry 50 minus that three three yeah 48 uh 33 you break even 
right? Because the difference between 48.33 and 50 is $1.77. If Intel closes below 48.33, you're making money, right? So for example, if Intel drops down to $40 by February, February 18th, you see the date here, February 18th, 2020. If it drops down to $40, then you go $10 difference because you had to, you bought the rice to sell it at a 50. That's $10 you can sell Intel stock for, but you paid a dollar 77. So what you can do is go $10 here. Let's bring up the calculator. $10, $10 minus 1.77. That means you made eight dollars and twenty-three cents, right? If Intel drops ten dollars in the next two months, okay, a little bit less than two months actually, because we're going to January first. So month and three weeks, let's say, right? What is that relative to? What type of return is that? So eight point two three three minus dollar seventy-seven divided by one point seven seven Doop. that's three point six times six five times return on investment return on your money right now if you're betting that the stock is going to go up right you can buy calls on Intel at fifty dollars a share for three dollars and twenty five cents that means Intel stock has to close be at least $53.25 for you to break even, and anything above that is premium that you're making. Okay. That's the way you can think about it. <coughs> Ronnie, you got some top comic, comic right? Da, 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 da. I wish I had gotten the Spider Man Carnage comic, but I'm still happy with what I got. Ronnie says, Ronnie, what did you get? You got. I can't remember what you got. And by the way, hi, Ronnie, how you doing? Hey, Chicho, I received your package. Well, thanks again. Ah, oh, awesome, Ronnie. Glad you got it. Oh, oh, how are you doing? Welcome to another live stream. I'm surprised they don't seem to have been affected by the global microchip shortage. Uh, Suppose we Intel's coming up with some new, new, new stuff, and they they were affected by the global. Uh, shortage to a certain degree because take a look at this this is the one year chart and oh come on it's refreshing again come come hurry hurry there we go oh intel's closed down now it was up 55 nice we're going to take a look at it so take a look at this thing at the six month right on october uh, 21st they announced their earnings and the stock dropped right stock dropped so they were probably affected by the shortage supply chain issues right so let's take a look at intel options right so intel was up 55 cents right now it's down five cents let's see hey where the options go on it oh it kicked us out of the options options let's take a look at the options come on doop, doop. load load my internet's really slow Here's the option. Here's what the. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, let's look at the straddle. Look, I don't use Yahoo too much for options. Uh, there, we're looking at the 52 one, weren't we? What were we looking at? We're 50. Oh, crap. I forgot which one we're looking at. Where is the Intel? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, we're looking at the 51. Uh, oh, hold on. Let's bring up uh, Cube. It was a 52 we're looking at. Oh, now I forget what we were looking at. Poop. Anybody remember what the strike price was? How does this work you sell them now for 50 and you have to buy them back at uh 48 
of whatever price no 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 that's shorting rank this is option option is you're paying a premium over the time frame to control a certain amount of shares you're not buying the stocks or selling the stocks you're buying the rights to be able to sell a stock at a certain price or you're buying the rights to be able to sell a stock at a certain price so what you risk is that that's all it is you're not risking any more than what you're putting in if you're naked short selling and stuff like this you're risking huge right so that's the difference that's the difference okay that's the difference oh because we're looking at alcoa we weren't looking at intel that's right we're looking at alcoa before uh for 55 cents it was up so what would what would alcoa be doing right now let's see that alcoa do movement we weren't looking at intel we're looking at alcoa oh alcoa is still the same so that's the general gist of options trading okay and one thing you can do is you can look for you can bet that the stock is going to go up and down right so for example if we go here let's find a serious movement in the market see anything's moved heavy right let's see if anything's had done a major move that might have options on it ah, nothing's see the thing is nothing's moving really uh too much right now okay nothing's uh because it's the last trading day okay let me do this let's bring up my video and let's bring up chat uh so do you think it's going to go up or down based on the charts for intel oh that's a serious question right it looks like it's bottoming right so it might do a move up but um it really depends on an announcement from what i understand sleepy waves uh intel wasn't was going to announce that they were going to um they're working on something new right so it really depends on what their news is uh as far as the general market goes what's intel's pe intel's pe was pretty low i believe and it gave a dividend let's see let's take a look at that Sorry if I'm not sharing the screen. It's not worth sharing at this speed goes out. Intel's PE is 10. It's got a yield of where's the yield? Yield is 2.69, right? 2.7% yield. The PE is low and the yield is uh 2.7%, which isn't bad, relatively speaking. I mean Intel's competitor is NVIDIA. NVIDIA. NVIDIA is killing it and has been killing it, right? nvidia's pe is 92 it's got a yield of 0.05 right so as far as value investing go intel is better value in terms of tech goes people are choosing nvidia over intel uh intel i believe lost apple's contract if i remember correctly right sleeper waves damn very good stock and is trading at less than a dollar now i remember when we looked at it was around three to four dollars yeah very yeah and family had a position in very but we the family dumped it uh did a couple of bumps on it right the supply chain is broken it's the pressure on consum consumable goods and materials is done the fascistic governments came in and locked society down they're in the in my opinion in the family's opinion they are intentionally breaking the economy because they want to reset it right pumped it trillion pumped it uh, pumped it worth of trillions of dollars of fiat currency a lot of big companies are doing buybacks like for example enrich came out oil company came out uh, recently and said they're doing a 1.6 billion dollar stock buyback like holy shite right holy shite why are they doing that because well they got free money right they got free money and they really don't see room you know investing in too much in r d because they don't know what's happening with the 
the the markets and stuff like that so they're propping up their stock price apple is doing the same thing right apple is doing the same thing and if the supply chains go back to normal very would be a good buy right oh my god that was like old school twitch streams <laughs> that was old school twitch streams uh then pay yuku yuki amd is a more direct competitor of intel amd is more direct let's take a look at amd what's amd doing amd was down a lot uh, advanced micro what's amd trading at oh wow amd is 145 amd pe 45 it doesn't have a yield it doesn't even give you anything and amd has been killing it right here i'll share share the screen with you here let me kill this here's the chart for amd let's take a look at this right here's amd Doop. all right uh pe of 45 no yield it doesn't give you anything back which means it's more of a growth stock than value investing right so they think they can make better use of their money so this is the day chart for it you know it's down whatever 22 cents here is the one year chart let's take a look at the one year chart wow look at this now would you be buying this thing right now i wouldn't be buying it right now right it's sitting almost at the 50 day moving average right the 200 day moving average is in the low hundreds and this thing's sitting at 144 okay let's take a look at the two-year chart on this all right and one thing you can take a look at is the the gap between the 200 day moving average which is down here right and the 50-day moving average which is here the bigger the gap the more likely that the stock will be pulled down okay and let's take a look at the five-year chart on this thing five-year chart on this thing and wow look at that look at that look at that look at that so a 10 banger if you bought it in 2018 all right and we're gonna do 10-year chart let's do a 10-year chart let's get a feel for this thing and it's a good idea to get a feel for this thing wow look at this thing in 2013 if you bought it you could have bought it at two dollars and 84 cents right or two dollars let's say you could have bought it at two dollars right now sitting at 144 dollars 72 times your money would you be buying this stock right now I don't know I don't know let's compare it to Intel please enter a valid hey, this is a valid symbol ah oh, this thing buggers INTC come on ah oh, it's not pulling it up unfortunately okay so I personally wouldn't be buying it uh, AMD uh, even though some people say buy winners right again don't forget free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity for more information see wikileaks.org defend.wikileaks.org or our julian assange and wikileaks playlist on sensor 2. sleepy boy chicho when you say it's sitting on support what do you mean it's sitting on 50 day moving average right so basically if you average out the buying price how much people bought it for for the last 50 days it averages out to that value right so when a stock hits the 50-day moving average or support levels that's what they they're called support levels they tend to do a bounce now is that bounce going to hit or is it going to cut through that support like butter when it cuts through that support with like butter the odds are there's going to be more uh, pressure on it on the downside and if it cuts through it resistance when it's on the upside hitting it on the upside is called resistance the same line right so if this is the 50-day moving average the stock is coming up is hitting that it's called resistance because average price over the last 50 days was that and when people hit that average price if they were sitting at a loss they usually try to not usually but they try to liquidate right 
they got their money back let's get out right and see what it does so it comes down if it's on the way down hitting it it's called support and it does bounces right people buy more okay free assange from extradition indeed indeed mr hezekiah how are you doing is that an enormous donkey tail behind you <laughs> that is <laughs> look it goes all the way down here it's all the way down here there's two strands and these things you touch them they fall the 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 leaves and these things and these things root and grow i like this plant i like this plant a lot it's fantastic wow that is awesome yeah <laughs> they are so delicate so delicate so delicate yeah hopefully we'll have it here for a long time and it's got like multiple strands coming from it right and you can take the seeds and throw them anywhere and they'll grow right here we'll throw one here there you go let's <laughs> see if you'll grow there <laughs> pastries gang here's the pastries mom's pastries went for christmas uh last week saw family uh touch base and grab some mum pastries right fantastic super delicious super delicious look at this goodness and this is chicho chicho jam right chicho jam Sleepy Ways comment looking at winning winning stocks it's amazing to see how much money people have made in stocks no one wonder all the YouTube gurus are constantly chasing up and and coming stocks indeed and when you're in that type of a market look out um, because there could be serious liquidity issues and for example right now i think it's an, a margin uh debt i believe is at an all-time high which basically means that people are leveraged to the to the t like they are so they've gone in debt to be able to buy stocks invest in stocks right so there could be serious if stocks drop they're gonna get margin calls and what's gonna end up happening is uh, they're gonna to have to liquidate out of certain stocks to be able to pay their debts their bets all right and what that does that basically puts more pressure on stocks on the downside okay and that in turn forces people to be liquidating when the price is dropping and what you see happening is like major movements down okay uh, we could be in that type of a situation we could be in that type of a situation come the new year cheryl how are you doing good morning happy new year hi all perfect topic for my day just finished the meeting at the bank not for bad reasons okay good good not for bad reasons is a good thing oh god many businesses in my area only take card payments now very sad times very sad times very sad times that's ridiculous as far as i'm concerned i won't shop in places that don't take cash i i i i i, I use cash they don't take cash they don't have my business uh end of story okay um too bad for them i walk away um, and they have to take cash cash is legal tender uh, businesses you can actually take legal action against them for not taking your cash if you want to go down that route i personally don't so uh, but they have to take cash can we look at one last talk sure sleepy ways what do you want to look at what do you want to look at? I want to do. Uh, uh, uh. 
What you guys got planned for the new year? You gonna party on the ground? You gonna party on the ground? Places that are locked down? Like just imagine Montreal, Canada, right? Quebec. They came out and said yesterday they announced that they're putting everybody under curfew as of tonight, starting at 10 p.m. I believe. All the restaurants, bars, clubs, venues that sold tickets to people so they could come and party on New Year's Eve. They they all just got burned. So the government just burned their citizens just burn them some of those people are going to go bankrupt because the government the fascistic government locked the place down unbelievable 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 right unbelievable right. what are we going to do about it what are they going to do about it match <laughs> can we look at beyond meat or match uh, i follow both of them right beyond meats is hitting a bottom match is uh by the way since you brought up match match is the only stock that the family has calls on that is betting that it's going to go up okay beyond me family had calls on as well but there was a little bump that happened and family sold out of that okay but if you want those let me bring them up Ch -ch -ch -ch. Let me set up the things. We'll take a look at match. Match. And let's bring it up here as well. Match. Hey, where'd it go? Oh, come on. I hate websites that do. You don't want them to do refresh they automatically do it i don't know why they set it up like that match match okay let me change the view okay let me bring up the chat um cheryl there are a bunch of local places that have signs saying they are cashless or only take cars but if you ask they will take cash might be worth asking to spread the word that people want it yeah indeed uh pennsylvania pennsylvania okay uh cheryl if you don't mind me asking whether yeah um when this whole thing happened there were a few places that were not taking cash uh one of them was local and i boycotted them for a year uh afterwards because I didn't want uh, to spend my money there, All right? So here's match. It's up five cents today. Okay. Let's take a look at the charts for it. Let's take a look at the one-year chart for it. Okay. So it's sitting well below the 50-day moving average and 200-day moving average. There is a trend that's pointing on the downside. But if you draw a line from here to here to here there could be possibly a downside to it but it broke its down trajectory here so you could draw a lot of lines to get a feel for what the stock is doing right so this is the one-year chart here's the two-year chart okay here's the two-year chart based on the two-year chart this could drop a lot more okay this could drop a lot more and here's a five-year chart here's the five-year chart based on the five-year chart it could drop a lot more take a look at match in 2018 17 it was sitting at 16 dollars right now sitting at 133 dollars right 133 dollars and let's take a look at the overview on this it's sitting at a p of 67 okay it's got a beta of 0.66 it beat 
I don't even know how to pronounce this. EBITDA, this is basically accounting uh, practices, you know, what they're announcing is 708 or let's say 800. That's really good. That's really good. Not bad, not bad, right? And you can go here. Uh, I won't go there, but you can also take a look at the options on it, right? So let's take a look at the options for, let's say, February. All right. Here's the options for February for match. So February 18th, right? It costs, it's sitting at $133, right? So it's between 130 and 135. Okay. Oops, no, 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 don't load. Ah, poop. It's sitting between 130 and 135. Oh, where'd it go? Ah, we're going to go back to February again. Let's go to February. So sitting between 130 and 135 at $133, right? Let's look at the straddle on this, right? So sleepy waves, let's make a note on this. Let's assume you're gonna assume that match is gonna do big movement by February, a week and three months, right? You can buy a, a put, let's say at 920, that you can you have the right to sell match at 135 right and you can buy a call for match for 1055 that gives you the right to to buy it at 130 right so put these together right put these together so one let's say you're going to straddle it you're going to bet that it's both going to go up and down so 1055 plus 920, 9.2. So it's going to cost you $19, right? Or $2,000 really, right? But let's assume it's going to cost you two, uh, $20, which is $2,000, right? So if you put $2,000 into this, right? It means you are buying a put, the right to sell it at $35 and a right to buy it at $30. You need this stock to go down, right? So if you're putting $20, you need to be at 115, right? Oh no, don't go, don't go, don't go. Ah, oh, pooper scooper, I did it again. February. I gotta stop doing that. <laughs> so, uh, are we in February? We're in February. Okay, right. So we're here, right? So you need it to be at least if you, for the put, okay, or for the call, you need the stock to be at least trading at one hundred and fifteen dollars for you to break even, right? So that's twenty dollars above this. So take a look at this thing. At one hundred thirty-five right now, if you go twenty dollars above this, it's at one hundred fifty-five right at 155 is trading at 23 dollars 23.50 let's say right so there is a three dollar premium there relative to what it would be if it was expiring today right relatively speaking because it's 133 dollars right or you need it to be above 150 dollars here for you to break even on february 18th right because if you go 20 dollars less than this you're at 110 dollars you're sitting at 24 dollars 25 dollars right so one way you can get a feel for how much the time value premium is on a certain option is take a look at the option of what it would cost what it would give you what you would lose if it was expiring today and look at what it is whenever the time frame is that you're buying it for us we're looking at february 18th okay is that clear that's one way of looking at this okay cheryl i know a few people that have left new york city in the last year yeah cheryl 
Yeah, because Sleepy Waves is there, I believe. Yeah. Right. Lark Bark. The cost of New York must be insanely ridiculous. And I'm from Cali, so I have a pretty good idea. Yeah, Cali, some parts of Cali are crazy. New York and Cali are two different states. Yeah. Even though, yeah, and both New York and Cali are under, under fascistic dictators, right? That are destroying both New York and California's economy, as far as I see it. Uh, and people are flooding out of California and New York right now. Um, I don't think it's a good place to be, tell you the truth. I don't think it's a good place to be. Let's turn this back on. Okay woke coast haha <laughs> woke coasts <laughs> get out of there <laughs> get out of there fun this was a nice chill options trading live stream good to do good to do it's something that we promised that we would do uh and i'm glad we're uh you know at least uh touching on it and uh, we'll delve into it a lot a lot more uh, in the future but for now I think it's worth just uh, looking at these things and uh, sort of exploring the possibilities exploring the possibilities uh, okay um, but, but let me check out the chat East Coast and West Coast have been terribly gentrified yeah yeah in a bad way in a bad way right Chicho, do you have interest in blockchain projects, something like Wonderland or DeFi? Uh, De DeFi, I've looked at. A friend of mine is involved in it, uh, and uh, she's having fun with it. Okay, she's having a lot of fun with it, and making money there as well. Uh, so uh, there is huge potential there. By the way, there is huge potential there. Indeed, indeed lots of potential lots of potential first time chat your resonance hi just arrived what are you streaming about uh we're taking a look at the options stocks trading uh we looked at a few stocks looked at some of the metrics uh looked at uh puts and calls lovely plans thank you very much thank you very much we got this one as a gift uh, Take a look. It's got a big flower on it. We didn't have this plant before. Take a look at this one. <laughs> Pretty. And that's the flower on it. Crazy, eh? Beautiful flower. I don't know how long the plant, the flower lasts, but it's um, here. We'll put it here so you can see it. Doop. Uh, it's wow, interesting. Pretty, yeah, very pretty very pretty uh, and thick thick Cheryl to give you an idea Lark Park to Lark Park I'm four hours from New York and know know several families for whom it is considerably less expensive to own a very large home here here drive to New York stay over in hotels for two nights then it is to live there as a family it works for them but it's nuts wow and hotels in new york are expensive i've been to new york hotels were crazy expensive see with chicho are you and family currently trying to buy any assets to compensate for the inflation no no i think a lot of assets are in a bubble as well right no large purchases uh stay liquid that's the key i think right now Cheryl, ooh, rough typing on that one. <laughs> Was this? I read okay. I left to the part where they work there. Oh, they work there. They go there to work. They drive four hours, stay in a hotel for two days to work, and then come back. Wow, my God, that's crazy. Your residence. Do you invest in options without owning the underlying asset? Indeed. And options trading is not investing. It's gambling. Let's make that clear options trading is gambling end of story okay i just subscribed thank you very much for subscribing uh your resonance appreciate the support 
and glad to have you here we're towards the end of the stream by the way uh, but thank you for joining us uh, and we do have a discord page by the way your resonance Doop. you're welcome to join us there as well isn't investing also gambling uh, to a certain degree I mean investing in your health is not gambling investing in your health is legit investing uh, I my SUV uh, sleepy waves I gave to my mom I we got it fixed right and uh, I did a tune-up on it got it on the road uh, and I'm giving it to my mom do you know why I'm giving it to my mom because her car uh, was parked outside on the street and a telephone pole fell on it right the city neglected rotting telephone poles and the people the owners of the land that were doing construction uh, were negligent in maintaining the telephone poles and during a windstorm the telephone pole fell on the car and the car was a write-off while it was parked at night the car is a write-off her car is a write-off and she needs a car so I've given my car to my mom it's actually uh, sitting in a different city I got to drive it to her uh, which works out fine which works out fine investing in family is not gambling oh my god so they commute so they commute it's more like three days there four days four here but yes as Cheryl I was doing that between Victoria and Vancouver for uh, three four years it was insane it was a four and a half hour commute because I had students still in Vancouver that I was teaching uh, that I promised I would see them uh, to the end of to graduation your resonance I don't really agree not if you use uh, the options as a head yeah as a hedge yeah 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 yeah. otherwise I could agree yeah agreed if you're if you're if you have the underlying asset and we talked about this earlier by the way your resonance right if you have the underlying asset and you don't want to sell for whatever reason maybe tax purposes because you don't want to realize the gains you can write calls uh, or write puts if you think the stock is gonna go up right and pocket the difference or if it's going down you can write the calls and um, pocket uh, the value the time value on it or if you're holding the underlying stock and you think there might be a hiccup in the price of the stock you might buy puts right to hedge against your bet that the stock is going to go up and when the stock goes down you make the difference so you're hedging your bets 100 percent right 100 percent and straddling is a beautiful thing to do when there's major movements of course ct makes much more sense to me connecticut sleepy ways but for these folks they're a bit closer to family here and much less densely populated your resonance you seem like a likable person thanks is the goatee <laughs> by the way i am in sweden salutations sweden we have some um, people that uh, do frequent our live stream from sweden i actually sent a couple of packages to sweden in the last week we last couple of weeks we had an auction yearly auction for twitch points where we auctioned off some uh some goodies uh comic books honey ha applesauce that i made drug war trading cards drug war trading cards i bought a whole bunch of these to auction off with twitch points and there were a couple of people in sweden that i sent the packages to expensive shipping to sweden wow from canada <laughs> west coast of canada what is the most important of the greeks according to you what is who's the most important of the greeks uh i i teach mathematics so i would say pythagorean <laughs> even though they were cult right uh so pythagorean theorem comes in handy a lot a lot right and i've done geophysics so pythagorean theorem i used all the time to make grids right square grids and i sent the package to us we are balancing each other out nice i'm in canada though west coast of canada 
This is crazy. Sleep with Chicho. This stream and your Discord just shows me how much I need to stop using Robinhood. Uh, they even charge a premium for everything you buy. Yeah, Robinhood is garbage. Remember, when Robinhood was trading at $42, I said family had puts in it, right? Right now, Robinhood is trading at $18 or something, right? No longer puts in Robinhood, but it's a garbage platform. I really would like to go go to Canada. Canada is nice, man, but we got fascistic government in power. Regarding options, I meant. Resonance. Uh, what is the most important of the Greeks, according to you? Regarding options, Greeks. Oh, the beta, beta alpha and stuff. Uh, beta is important for options, of course, right? Beta is crazy important. <laughs> I didn't catch it, it went over my head. <laughs> There is no Pythagorean theorem in options trading. That's why you come out uh, so friendly and peaceful. It's not the goatee. It's not the goatee. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, Canada. Canada in 2022. Nice, nice. And gang, don't forget. Free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on Sensor Tube. Gang, should we call the stream? That's called the stream. That was fun. And your residents, welcome to our Twitch channel um hopefully you enjoyed the last few minutes of our live stream it was very chill today happy new year by the way uh, i hope you enjoy 2022 as does everyone else uh no no <laughs> stay we just uh, we, we we're almost in two hours i know we'll be back i do i i i was doing a lot of streams uh i was doing you know a, a lot of streams before i slowed down for the last couple of months we had a lot of stuff family stuff to take care of but we will be doing a lot of streams your residence sleep away chicho will you have more streams looking at the markets like this i loved it thank you my pleasure sleep ways and yes we will be indeed indeed cheryl have a safe new year's celebrations everyone you as well cheryl and everyone of course thanks happy new year to you too thank you very much happy new year to everyone yours awesome awesome uh oh it was fun closing out the year with you chicho thanks for the stream my pleasure gang my pleasure and gang as a closing if you want to know what this work is about i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho if you want to support this work if you want to follow this work which is basically layered on mathematics patreon is a great way to do so for those of you that are supporting this work on patreon gang thank you very much for the support happy new year to you i hope 2022 is an amazing year and a free year uh, and it is in large part because of your support that we're able to do what it is that we are doing as well as the support we're getting on Twitch. So if you want to participate in these live streams as they're happening in the chat, Twitch is where you want to be at. And gang, thank you for being here. Thank you for the support and mods as always. Thank you for taking care of business. Uh, I'm just going to read some more of the chat. Just uh, Lonely Piggy, I'll be stuck with a curfew here in Quebec. So no, oh yeah, I know Lonely Piggy, so fascistic. What? They just pulled the rug from underneath so many businesses, mom and pop sh uh, shops. Unbelievable to me. Unforgivable, really. See with Chicho, thank you for all the streams and work this year, Chicho. Appreciate it. My pleasure, my pleasure. What about the row? Uh, the greeks are all are, are all important <laughs> the greeks are all important Alega chichonia in 2022 will be amazing i hope it man the brother uh do you think that is that is important it could be do you think uh where are we ah, last chat uh do you know about haps uh multi-stream platform no i don't know about haps H A P P S. It's it's uh it's like um it's like OBS but it streams multiple platforms. Right now I'm only streaming on Twitch. I just decided to only stream on Twitch, not on other platforms, and definitely not streaming on Sensor Two. 
uh, and gang we do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on my VK gap parlor uh, getter bitcloud and the VK you can follow the work there and again we do have a discord page you can come to our chat anytime you want and type in discord and you'll get the little invite there and the links will be in the description of this video we have probably around a thousand people sharing information there, talking just lurking and reading and it's it's a great place to be I spend a lot of time there share a lot of information and require a lot of knowledge there we will be uploading the audio of this live stream to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho as a podcast and this podcast will be available in your favorite podcasting platform including spotify itunes and google play and we will be uploading this live stream to sensor tube to pitch to rumble and to odyssey and all the links for all these platforms will be available in the description of this video after it's been uploaded and the audio on soundcloud as well and it's available on our twitch page as well you can scroll down and you'll see all these links aside from that gang interesting 2021 i hope you have a fantastic fantastic 2022 i talked to a guy uh he said that Oro is the most important but most people say vega the volatility the volatility is crazy important that's th the ones that are very volatile are the ones that are amazing to straddle right such as moderna <laughs> but on the downside is better the puts gang salutations see you in 2022 bye everyone